one of the big shifts that we kind of had to adjust to was how we're planning. In the beginning, it was kind of like, okay, it's fall. Let's get our fall stuff out. We weren't really planning as far ahead as we needed to. So we're kind of having to learn to do that. We have to have these plans in place so that together as a team, we have rules in place and we have plans in place so that we aren't kind of pushed around, especially with the vendors. Running a retail business doesn't have to be so hard. Welcome to the Creative Shop Talk podcast, the go-to podcast for creative shop owners, studio owners, and independent retailers. I'm your host, Wendy Batten, retail business coach and mentor. Each week, I'll share simple proven business strategies, inspiring stories from fellow retailers and advice from industry experts. Together, we're going to work to find the success you want from your retail business with more profits in your till and a little more joy in your life. Hey there, my friend, and welcome back to the Creative Shop Talk podcast. I'm your host, Wendy Batten. I'm so happy you're here with us today. We have another retailer success story, what we're calling the CEO series, the confession series. And I have two retailers to introduce you to today, Melinda Stone and Wendy McNerney, who are business partners from Monrovia, California. They run the Addicts Events and Home Treasures. And today's guests, I'm really excited again, back to this, not just sharing the successes but sharing, you know, all the ups and downs and bumps along the way, the journey from real retailers <laughs> conversation and shop talk today. I'm really excited to, um, you know, share their stories. And one thing I want to point out and I want you to take away and really pay attention to with their journey and their story of stepping into their CEO role and really, you know, seeing their dreams come true, despite all the bumps that we've had over the last couple of years. Like many retailers that I've had the opportunity and pleasure to work with, and uh, Melinda and Wendy are both, they've been to my live events, they were uh, mastermind members, uh, taken my courses, Retail Made Simple, and both, of course, members of my retailers inner circle that I'm super proud of. But they both had the goal. They were running a beautiful events business and they have been partners and friends for years as they share inside the interview. But I want you to take away just the note that they both wanted to leave their full-time jobs for something better, which I hear a lot from retailers. You know, they started a hobby business and they wanted to go and make it a full-time business. So they're going to talk about their journey, how that's progressing, what's happening there, and also how, you know, constraints, we've talked about constraints many times on the podcast and in my programs, you know, creativity comes from constraint, right? So how they've kind of shifted and morphed it and added some kind of cool revenue streams that you're going to want to listen up to, some different revenue streams a revenue stream that I think is something that a lot of us are going to need to be paying attention to. So I'll keep you in suspense about that and what they're doing. And I just think it's fantastic. And, you know, the the ups and downs of half, uh, you know, that the reasons we have to sometimes put our plans on hold, right? Um, the pandemic and all of the things and, uh, you know, all of the opportunities that came from that, but also the changes in our plan. And I know so many of you have had to do that as well, too. So I am thoroughly excited to introduce you to Wendy and Melinda, another great example of retailers, you know, just really doing amazing things, growing their businesses, being successful, but it hasn't always been easy. And I love that, you know, they're going to share a part of their story. And hopefully you can take something away from that as well, too, or I know you will. And uh, listen up, grab a coffee, and let's jump into their story and let us know if you have uh, any takeaways after listening to Melinda and Wendy. So let's go. Wendy and Melinda are here from the Attic Events and Home Treasures. That's you go by the full name, don't you? <laughs> and we're have we have them here today to share a little bit of um, I'm calling it the CEO confessions for retailers, retailer confessions, and to talk a little bit about not just the highlight reels of being a retailer, but you know, the whole all the whole journey. So this is part of our new series, and I'm very excited to have you here. Hi, ladies. Hi, thank you for having us. 
Haas. I'm so excited. Thank you again for taking time. I know um, we are recording this right before um, <laughs> Black Friday and Thanksgiving hasn't happened yet. And so we're recording it uh, in the middle of the craziness. So I appreciate you taking time and attention and everything away from your businesses to join us and to share information with other shop owners. Do you want to tell us first a little bit about your business and your journey and how you guys started the whole event? Sure. Um, I'll start with that. Um, Melinda and I have been friends for a really long time. <laughs> um, so we've been entrepreneurs for a long time. We've had a, a few different businesses, um, but most of them tied kind of into the business we have now. So we were event and wedding coordinators. Um, and then we, well, I was doing furniture and selling at a local flea market that we have here at the Rose Bowl, which is a pretty big one in Southern California. So um, pretty much the reason I started doing that was the passion I have for doing the furniture. It's a huge compliment to me when someone purchases a piece you've done for their home. Um, and so I started doing that. It's kind of therapeutic as well, <laughs> you know, to take time, kind of rehab this piece of furniture and then someone buys it from you. So I was doing that for about four years and then um, we had the opportunity to take over a shop in Monrovia um, and the space that we had found was really pretty and perfect for what we had in mind. So um, we decided to go on another <laughs> venture with <laughs> entrepreneurship, but it kind of tied in the um, the event planning. So that's why it's events and home treasures. Um, our idea was in that shop, we had a fairly big workshop. So um, we kind of incorporated people bringing their parties or events in as well. So we like to teach workshops. Part of the passion of doing this is to teach others how to do it. And most people can do it. It's just maybe they're a little afraid or they don't want to jump in. So if you're there to kind of guide them, like seeing their project from what it was to when it, they finish and they leave happy and confident is huge. That's what my passion is. So we enjoy doing the workshops, but then we were also doing like, you know, wedding shower kind of things where they are creating in the workshop, but it's also an event. So um, whether it's a birthday party or, you know, like the bridesmaids are coming together, working on the favors, they're having a good time, you know, they're together, but then they're creating something to leave with. So that's what the events part kind of got incorporated with our name. And then the treasures are just the different pieces that we have in the shop. That's kind of how we got started with the whole actual brick and mortar of, of it all. And it just happened. It's passion, right? Your passion. Um, can you share a little bit about the revenue streams that you have going on? Because I know you have a few things. So you have the events, you have the workshops, um, and you're doing product sales as well. Can you share, touch a little bit on that? Yeah, so um, we also sell D DIY supplies. We carry a couple of paint lines and top coats and finishes, as well as uh, other DIY product lines. About a year and a half into our journey, we decided to bring other vendors into our shop. So right, currently we have six other vendors that bring in their furniture pieces that they've um, created, and as well as other vintage type treasures, handcrafted items. So we have that bucket as well, um, obviously the furniture. And then we sell a uh, little vintage and um, handcrafted items as well of our own. Right. So I'm laughing because I'm smiling here because you're saying buckets. And so, yeah. um, so Melinda and Wendy are uh, longtime clients. We've been working together for a long time. They're members of my um, Level Up Mastermind group and our inner, my inner circle, uh, my coaching group. And I always say buckets. I say revenue buckets. And it's funny because I don't even know where that came from, but I've shared, I think I've shared it on the podcast before. So I always laugh when people say buckets, what is she talking about buckets? So for those of you who are not in my groups, revenue streams are also known as revenue buckets. So I love that. You said that. I love that you said that because it makes it's me just how we talk now. I know it's how we talk. It's how we speak and really um, diversifying a lot of different things. Cause it hasn't been an easy journey. Um, so a question that always comes up about, running a business together. So it all seems like the dream with your friends. And I didn't 
ask you guys about this, but I just, you know, um, I know you've been long, long time friends and you have other revenue streams too, right? So we'll get to those as well, but you've been friends for a long time and just reminded me to sort of mention to other people, has it been an easy journey? Although like always, I, I don't even know this. I don't know the answer to this. Has it always been super simple, like super easy going? It's really hard when you're two people who are friends running a business. Has that been okay? So far, yeah. I mean, yeah. obviously, <laughs> business <laughs> business um, is not always easy, and it, we certainly don't have it mastered by any means yet. I don't know if anyone ever really does. Things are always changing and pivoting, right? Mm-hmm. I think we knew both knew going in that we trusted each other completely. Having other done other businesses together, and we were roommates at one time. We knew that we could work well together. I mean, we did everything. That, structurally and legally right so that's all taken care of but yeah I couldn't imagine doing it with anybody else and we couldn't do it alone oh, <laughs> so that we're not doing it alone and I think we both bring different strengths and weaknesses yeah. to the table that for sure you know like Melinda's very strong with the business side of things and um knowing what we can and can't do with HR and things like that where I tend to do more of the furniture or deal with the customers. So we kind of just both have different things that we we do. We just naturally fall into those avenues and um, it seems to work pretty balanced. Yeah, you guys are doing a great job. Do you want to share a little bit about the business structure? Um, do you both work in the business full time? How is that working for you? Like, how is that structured for you right now? Share with our listeners. Well, when we first started, we were both working full-time jobs um, and we had an employee that ran the shop um, during the week and then we worked the weekends. Since kind of really with the pandemic, um, things kind of changed for us and we're now, we don't have an employee on a regular basis anymore. We're able to just run it, the two of us, retired from those previous corporate jobs. So yeah, the the, the shop is more of our full-time job now yeah it's it's been really fun watching you guys grow your business to be honest yeah. it's really interesting um because you have big audacious goals now Me you're too. both you're both moms um just yep. just you know you both had corporate jobs you both had kids running around and you were running this event center and everything so it's there's there's a lot and a lot, I think a lot of people think as self-employed people and partners even you know, all the other stuff does matter. And I know that that's been a really important part of how you structure your business and, and grow your business. Cause you have to consider that you have to consider that, you know, Wendy has kids and you have to pick them up at school and that, you know, we have things we have to do and we have to take paychecks. So, you know, you, I've been watching you both really paying attention. I, I'm laughing because you said it, Wendy, uh, that, you know, uh, Melinda's more of the the business side and you're more of the, it's almost like front of house, back of house, but uh-huh. yeah. you know, I've been watching you both, you know, you know, your numbers, you're really good with your numbers. I've been watching that happen as well. And again, the struggle is making it work for two people sometimes, right? Yeah. So it's, it's, it's never, it's never easy. You also have some other revenue streams. You've added some different revenue streams. Your business structure has changed a little bit, especially during pandemic. I mean, there are no, there were no events here in California. There were a lot of changes. <laughs> that's, yeah. what, that's what we're going to call it now. <laughs> there were a lot of, yeah. a lot of pivots. Um, yes. Can you just share a little bit? Because again, that's part of the struggle, right? The success doesn't come without the struggle. And I, and I, and you guys are well on your way to success, but there was, there are, there were moments, especially last year. Can you talk a little bit about some of the shifts that you made and how they affected your business? Well, I think one of the major changes in revenue streams that we saw was um, the custom work that came through. I mean, normally we have some custom work throughout the year, but that really was a huge plus during the shutdown. Um, Yeah, especially, I mean, we weren't sure quite how that was going to go. People are home, they're wanting to redo their space but so some people were wanting to buy the paint and and do it themselves from us but other people wanted us to do the project so it was fortunate that I wasn't working my other job so I was just there painting and getting them done but that was huge for us so um and it seems to have kind of continued even though we're reopened a lot of people maybe didn't realize we did that before so um that's been a huge one for us also not being able to do workshops in person 
we kind of were like, well, how can we, how can we still do this and be connected to the community? So um, we put little kits together um, and people could buy them and we'd ship them or they'd do a, you know, a pickup at the shop and set it outside the door. And then we'd do a Facebook live and they could do the workshop with us. So we were still connected with them. Like just for example, in the community, a big thing that was going on here was they were looking for a bear. The kids yeah. were the bear hunt, the great bear hunt. So uh, Melinda's mom cut us some wood bears. And so we made a workshop out of that. So they could pick up their kit. They could do the workshop with their kids or their grandkids. And then people were putting the bears in their windows. So, you know, like the only thing you could really do during the pandemic was go for a walk. <laughs> So, you know, and even my son and I, we'd walk the neighborhood, there's a bear, there's a bear in the window. So that was kind of like fun to have the community. Oh yeah, I didn't realize they did these workshops and they could still be online and do them with us live, you know, and talk with us. And so that was kind of fun, but we had to force ourselves to do lives and things out of our comfort zones. (laughs) But isn't that what we do? Isn't that part of the struggle? I mean, I... I feel like every day we have to get comfortable with being uncomfortable every day, you yeah. know, um, just everything. I, you know, <laughs> I shared earlier before we started that I still find podcasting uncomfortable. Like it's still weird for me, you know, we all do uncomfortable things, but it was really fun watching you do so many cool things to keep your community. I know that's really important to you. I mean, your community are your customers and let's face yeah. it, it's, great to say, you know, we love our customers and we want to keep our community, but we need to keep our community. We need to keep our customers. It's, it's a life support. And again, you guys, so last year, um, so last year, the opportunities presented themselves. I call them the silver linings of this Mm -hmm. pandemic. I mean, you actually had more awareness, more custom work, more, both of you were able to work in the business now, which I think is phenomenal because that was your goal. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> we had a conversation one day and you said, okay, we need to make this number. <laughs> like, this is the number we need to make in order to do this. And, you know, and you're well on your way. You seem to be, you know, we're, we're, we're working through, we're working through numbers and we're working through um, pushing the gas. Um, do you feel that the decision-making is easy? Like, is, do you want to share like a little bit about how you make your CEO level decisions? I know one of the, again, the CEO confession side of things here is, you know, do you make everything with the CEO hat on or is it emotional? How do you make your decisions um, together, especially where there's two of you? I'm always fascinated by the dynamics of two people. So I think that that can be um, a big challenge is, is that we do make every decision together, anything big anyways. So like, if I have an idea, I can't just run with it. Like I have to wait until there's a time that we can both sit down and talk about it and to go from there. So that can be challenging, but then again, it's also a plus that you have someone else to bounce things off of. Cause something that I think is brilliant one day, she might talk me down from, and then later I realize, yeah, she was right. You know, that doesn't really fit tweak it a little bit like yeah what it, what about this or oh yeah I didn't think of this let's so that helps us it's kind of like you're bouncing the ideas off each other and and then the plan comes together better I think yeah yeah I think running the, I, and you're uh, it's funny I do see both of your strengths regularly I see you know <laughs> um, well and it's a good thing and you guys are very fortunate to have the I mean, I, I don't say I see both your strength, but I can see we're having two people. It's it's almost like so. I regularly joke that you know we have to have conversations with ourselves when we're when we're self employed. You know, it's usually mm-hmm. like the front of house and the back of house, and you got to run everything through the CEO and then the creative person. Well, you guys have to. You know, you, you you're both oh. CEO. You both take on the CEO role. I see that all the time, but you also both take on the creative role. But it's kind of great to be able to bounce that off. Yeah. Partnerships don't always work. And I, I don't even know if I've shared this with, but truth is I regularly talk people out of partnerships. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't always work. What always, right. and if you, if people do go into partnerships, it's usually, and I've been in partnerships and other businesses that we've owned and st- I just see it happen disintegrate a lot. So uh, kudos to you guys. I do see you very respectful of one another. And um, again, trust is a really big thing. Yeah. Um, one of the things you guys, so again, another, another thing that you've done this year, you just came back from, and you added a revenue stream, which I think is super coolio. And I, I just think it's the greatest thing <laughs> I, wish I could have done this with you, but do you want to share a little bit about what you just did another revenue stream that you just added? 
Yeah, so we added um, an experiences bucket or a stream to our business. Uh, it was actually something we had planned to do in fall of 2020. Obviously, um, things shifted with that, but um, we took a group of our customers on a picking trip. So we're located in Southern California, and we had been to Round Top, Texas for an antiques market back in the beginning of 2020, like right before everything changed. And we wanted to, to bring our customers with us. Um, so we did that. And this last October, we went to the Fall Antiques Market. We first stopped in Waco, Texas to, to visit Magnolia and um, do some shopping and eating there. And then moved on to Round Top. We were there for three nights. We uh, picked the fields. We went to the, the big barn event. Um, we you know had dinners together. We did a, a painting contest um, together where they, um, they bought a piece while we were out picking. And then we all came together and uh, had a little contest on who could flip their project the best. So um, it was a lot of fun and we're excited. We've got some ideas and plans for future trips too. Now we want to go all the places. So I, I think that's brilliant. Um, I followed you guys along. I mean, I know there was a lot of hesitation. I mean, even right up while you were booking people is like, is this going to be a go? Is like yeah. you know, all the, you know, so, you know, you put a lot of really great plans in place. I am a hundred percent confident that future trends are going to be about experiences. I think that's really important. So you already have that down as far as your events, you're back to doing events, you're back to doing, um, you know, uh, your workshops and all of that. <clears throat> this is sort of just an added, but taking people on journeys and trips and I mean, even just out picking locally or whatever, like whatever yeah. your customer, like, and I, and I, my advice to people listening is, you know, what do your, what do your people want to do and hang out with you? And I think that's amazing that you're doing that. Um, if it's okay with you, I'd love to be able to put in the show notes, um, you know, the wait list for your next trip, because I know it's going to sell out again. I know it's going to be amazing. So sure, I'm, putting yeah. on, I'm putting you on the spot. I'm like, we're, yeah, putting no. it in, we're putting it on the note because I think it's a really great, I, you know, I know you're going, you're hoping to go back to round top and other things as well too. So we'll put your website on there as well. So one of the questions, you know, about being a CEO, you know, um, we talk, I talk about it a lot. I don't mean a corporate CEO. We all left corporate jobs, right? right. <laughs> we all left our corporate jobs to do this and we could all go back to being corporate, job, corporate, you know, but I do talk a lot. I teach, I, I believe in my core that we have to think like a CEO of our business. So we run things differently. It doesn't mean, but emotionally, but still with a CEO hat on, I literally, shipped you guys hats, <laughs> like CEO hats, like <laughs> CEO hats, you know, I kind of joke about it, you know, we put those on. Can you talk a little bit, if it's okay, each of you about how, you know, what kind of decisions you've made, how it's affected your business at all by thinking like a CEO, because I've seen some shifts as well. Has there been anything that you'd like to share? I think one of the big shifts that we kind of had to adjust to was how we're planning you know, in the beginning, it was kind of like, okay, it's fall, let's get our fall stuff out, or let's order, we weren't really planning as far ahead as we needed to. Um, so we're kind of having to learn to do that. As far as products, as far as vendors in the shop, you know, maybe we don't necessarily have a plan or date set up when we're going to decorate or something like that, but like they're asking. And so it's like, we have to have these plans in place so that together as a team, like we have rules in place and we have plans in place so that we aren't kind of pushed around, um, especially with the vendors. So that's important. And also with the product lines that we carry, you know, they're constantly changing. And so that's one thing that we kind of have learned as CEOs, um, kind of just how to make decisions better or take our time rather, I guess. Mm -hmm not be pushed into things just because they're giving us a deadline. That's one of the things I think that we've kind of learned as CEOs. No, I definitely agree with that, that, um, that we get to, to call the shots, you know, that this is our business. We get to make, make the rules. <laughs> like Wendy said, yeah. And feeling comfortable with that, I think is yeah. really the CEO shift. Yeah, it's the it's the courage. Um, that's such a great point, Wendy, about even dealing with your, you know, with your suppliers and your vendors and negotiating and all of those things, you know, that, that's our that's our that's our job, right? It's our job. 
Um, I've also, um, I've watched you guys do a lot of number crunching and, and I know that Melinda is the number girl. <laughs> she loves her spreadsheets and a lot of us aren't <laughs> like that, but I think that doesn't come natural to a lot of, like a lot of us We're like, we, we build, um, And, you know, we build these passion filled hobby businesses, which is how, you know, and we have ideas and we're not lazy and we drive and we drive, you know, we're, we're doers. I watch you guys do, but we don't always number crunch and plan out ahead. And I see you guys doing that all the time now and setting goals and percentages and, you know, like we need to reach this. And then, you know, I think we had a conversation one time and you said, you know, we need to make this, but that means we'd have to go up this much. And you were like a little bit can we do that? I'm like, let's push it. Right. Like, how are we going to do that? If we increase and you're really paying attention to the numbers because it it needs to, it needs to be right. So yeah, not just planning scheduling, but we're, and, and, but it's the confidence to know that these are the numbers we want to hit. And I've seen you guys do that like consistently for the last two years, especially. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I don't know if you feel like, I think you must feel that too. Yeah. No. Yeah. I think especially, um, being able to focus more on those little things and doing the reverse engineering that you always teach us, um, has definitely, definitely helped as far yeah. as those, and those it's numbers. Funny. It's funny because I think when you started talking about your trip, um, and I'm just gonna, <laughs> I was going to share this, but like you were talking about your trip and in our mastermind group. And I think the questions were like, we get emotionally and some things are cool and we want to do them because and what do I always, like, I always say, like, you know, our head can justify anything our heart wants. I'm yeah. a big believer in that. Like I'm, I'm all over that. Cause that's me. Like I used to mm-hmm. do that, all, you know, but you know, we really looked at your numbers for like, you know, this is how much it's going to cost to take these people there. And this is how much, you know, revenue we can make. And cause we didn't want you to lose money. Right. So, right. because a lot of times we get great ideas that aren't money makers and you know, they're, they're, they're lost leaders and we don't want that. <laughs> we can't afford that anymore. Right. So right. I know that the benefits, so it's just funny because, you know, coming prepared with the numbers and, you know, reverse engineering all the details and all of those things, they really do matter. So, so uh, bravo. I think you guys have done. That's why I invited you on here. I really wanted you to, I, I really feel like you've, you are an example of stepping into the CEO role, but knowing it's not easy all the time. Right. So, right. um, and there's been struggles, lots of struggles, right. It's, <laughs> COVID days haven't made things easy, but it, you know, because you put your CEO hats on, you know, you're able to maneuver and uh, walk through that. So, um, yeah. so it's exciting to watch that. Um, what's next? What's going on for the shop? Do you guys want to share what's coming up? Anything exciting happening or? Um, I think we're just really looking forward to expanding that experiences, uh, revenue stream, uh, adding a, a maker's market, in December, again, hoping to plan another trip for next year and just kind of keep growing that. Even like you said, maybe the local picking trips as well um, and just really expand on that, that revenue stream yeah. we're excited about. Yeah, I'm, I am so convinced that you are so on the right track for that. I think people just, I think people want to feel like they belong too, right? And I mean, I, yeah. I see that you're building that beautiful community of, you know, we build our regulars. I mean, almost everybody listening probably has a group of regulars, but there's a difference when you build people that are like community, like, like they just really, they just want to hang out and do things with you. And that kind of, there's a difference. There is a different feel about that. Right. So, and you're building such a beautiful um, community around your shop. So it's, it's been, it's been fun to watch. So one quick question for each of you, what does it mean to you to be a CEO? We both kind of share this one a little bit, but And just coming back to what we have learned, um, just not being pressured into doing things that we aren't comfortable with and kind of like sticking behind what we're confident with, like our beliefs and our way of wanting to do things, both with the the products that we carry, um, kind of standing behind those and it makes who we are um, and who we are as far as who we carry in the shop or, I mean, personally for us, we, it's important to have local people selling. So local people making our candles, our soaps, people that are involved in the community. And I think for us, we've learned that that's going to grow our business because we're including people with, within the community that are going to spread the word about us, especially with the, the maker's market. When we advertise that, 
we were not sure, like, are we going to fill up the vendor list? Like, are we going to be struggling for vendors? And we had an overwhelming amount of people apply. Like we have a waiting list. And I think it's kind of giving us some more confidence that people are wanting to be a part of what we're doing and it's helping to grow their businesses as well. Like we're all working together as a community. So I think that's a huge step in the right direction as CEOs for us to see how the community is helping us grow our business. <laughs> because so, so many times we have people come in and say, we didn't know what this store was or what you do in here. And um, so just trying to do little things like community involved things where they're bringing, it's bringing them into the shop, you know, has helped so much. So that that's a great, I mean, that is a great answer to that because you're being super clear and confident about your brand and your mission. You guys are, you know, and, and not everybody has that confidence because, you know, you all of a sudden find yourself doing other things for, mm-hmm. you know, that you sh- think you should be doing maybe, or, yeah, right. you know, and you got, I, that's such a great answer, Wendy. It's so, um, it's so important to stay true to your mission and your values and your integrity and, you know, your brand messaging is, is, you know, and what you see and what you feel. So, and, and you're doing such a good job. You're being so successful. So you're, you're wearing your hat, your CEO hat. <laughs> it's taken us a long time to, to get to where we feel like we are kind of narrowing down what, who we are, you know, and what we're carrying instead of just, like you said in the beginning, like, oh, this is cool, or this would be fun, or, and then we have too many different avenues. It's like, we had to kind of focus down on what is important to us and figure those out instead of just carrying lots of different products. Well, what's important and what's profitable and what are, and who we want to surround ourselves with on a day-to-day basis. I mean, I think when we start out, we're bootstrapping and we kind of say yes to everything. I mean, I don't mean everything, but, you know, we say yes to a lot and we, again, that confidence thing of that, you know, not being, not really confident about all, you know, how we feel about, we're always learning and I know we're always gaining confidence, but the being brave enough to, um, to say no sometimes and realizing, but watching, like, even as you evaluate, um, you know, different product lines or saying no to a product line that you've been carrying for a long time, maybe you have to set that down and let it go. It's not profitable. It doesn't fit in our mission anymore. It doesn't, it's just not, you know, and saying no to clients and I, meaning that we don't hang on to things. Um, we yeah. don't hang on to product lines because, you know, a few people like it, but it's losing us money. Uh, I don't know, you know, but again, bringing in your local and you guys have a very clear brand messaging. So, um, so that's a, that's a really great way to be a CEO. That's really awesome. So I think that's pretty much it for me too. Um, just having that confidence that, you know, with what we want it to be and um, what we want to carry and who we want to serve and having that confidence. I think I, I think I'm also watching if I can add, and I don't know, you can tell me if I'm right or wrong, but you both have very clear um, confidence in your goals as well. Like you're planning ahead yeah. and you know what you need and you know what you want for, you know, maybe not in complete details for 2022, but I know you're already moving, you know, you're confident. I'm confident that you're confident that you're going to make a plan <laughs> and you're going to action that plan. Whereas I think maybe if you're not wearing a CEO hat on, um, you know, we kind of wing it, we hope things work out and, you know, we're, and I, I just don't see that with you, you guys, I see like the plan is in place and of course we can't control pandemic, but we are confident in our numbers and we're confident in, you know, I see that with, uh, you know, with, uh, confident CEOs. So, um, and again, your brand messaging and your mission, now, along with the numbers that you need to make, because that's part of the CEO. <laughs> that's how, and I, it, you, everybody hears me say this. You know, our CEOs are sit, our our board of directors as the CEO. Our board of directors are sitting at our kitchen tables, and I know both of you have lots of people at your kitchen tables. <laughs> that, you know, you have to answer to, and part of the whole mission, and also includes your vendors and all of the things that you know, yeah. not necessarily that they're your board of directors, but you still have to be responsible for and include in your mission, right? So right. It's, you know, um, those decisions are CEO level decisions that you're making every day. So I'm so, I'm, I'm so proud of you. <laughs> Whenever I say that, I always feel like, I don't know, like mama bear or whatever, but I am, I'm just so happy to see the success and the confidence that you have. Um, and, and just 
it's just a pleasure to, to work with you guys all the time. So um, one last little piece we always end up, I appreciate, I know we're running a little bit late, so I appreciate your time uh, and don't want to keep you too long. Uh, I want to honor your time, I guess. We always ask everybody as they're, uh, when they're on the show, what is one piece of advice or that you want to leave with our listeners, um, piece of advice or a quote or anything that you've ever been given that you could share with our listeners? Melinda, you want to go first? The quote I've always liked throughout my personal life is to live the life you've imagined. And um, I think that really um, transcends into the business as well, where I am living the life I imagined now, being able to be full-time and a full-time entrepreneur, bringing the shop forward the way I imagined, the way Wendy imagines it is kind of just what we're doing. Pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> It is. It is cool watching you live the life that you imagined because you were full on corporate, like mm -hmm. right up until last year, right? So yeah, full on corporate. So yeah, that's it. That's a beautiful quote. Thank you for sharing that. That is that's a great way to great way to look at it. That you know, yeah, that's what we should be doing, right? Most Running the shop we imagine too. So well, I think that's such great advice because we're not running corporations and you know, like that mm -hmm. we're, we're not, cause that's what we all left again. Right. If we want to do that, we can go work for somebody else. Right? Um, right. The life that you imagined is, you know, taking that passion and all of those things and doing what you love to do. And it, as much as I hate saying balance, cause it's, but it is intertwined, right? Like our life, our business are like the whole, the whole thing, what we do on a daily basis when we work for ourselves is also, you know, we don't, clock out right so right you have to, that has to be part of the life that you imagined right you have, yeah you have to um you have to go do it all so that's a beautiful quote thank you for sharing that and Wendy do you have anything you'd like to share or quote yes. no not really <laughs> <laughs> okay that's all right any little I bit mean, of advice to any to any listeners out there that would might help them if they're struggling with their confidence as a CEO anything that might lift them um, up a little bit You've given such great advice, so I don't want to put you I on. I think just the biggest piece of advice that we've kind of learned and it's taken a long time is just to not be pressured by other customers or, um, you know, the lines that you carry or anything like that. I think our, we have a major fear of missing out <laughs> sometimes. And so we just say yes, because we don't want to be passed up or miss the opportunity to be, you know, a retailer for a line or something. And it's like, hang on, you know, they should also be wanting our business so they can be patient and let us have time to figure this out. Is it going to be right for us? Or, you know, let's take everything into consideration. So I think um, that's something that we've, it's taken us a while, <laughs> but we're kind of getting to that point where we take a step back and, and think about it. And if we miss out on that, then we miss out and maybe we'll pick it up later when it's a better time for us. So we're trying to do that. <laughs> That's a brilliant piece of advice. I yeah, I often say, I don't know if you you guys have heard me say this uh, before, but you know, FOMO is real. Fear of missing out is it's real. And then again, the desperate and you know, kind of the whatever. But I like to look at it now as freedom of missing out. Uh, so whenever, yeah, nice. because I suffer from that too. It's like, oh, <laughs> you know, I get offered opportunities and whatever. But again to your, to your point of having a plan and being the CEO and putting that hat on firmly, does this fit into our plan, this opportunity mm -hmm. or whatever, you know, did I budget for it or did I, you know, cause we all get these like opportunities and that's, you know, that's the greatest part of having a vision and a plan. Cause does this fit into it? You know, does this new brand fit into our plan? And we need time to think about it. If you're being pressured to that, then it's like, it's going to have to be a no. So now you have a new, a new way to look at it. It's not, uh, not fear of missing out it's freedom. freedom freedom of missing out and I tell you that saves me a lot but you know making the decision again like you guys have been doing with the confidence with your CEO hats on you can it's the freedom now of saying of saying no or saying yes you know with the decision of because you have a plan in place and a vision for your business for that lifestyle you want to live so so thank you ladies I so appreciate you being here today it's been a wonderful conversation I know that I, my listeners are going to be inspired by listening to you and hopefully everybody's inspired to put their CEO hat on um, we are going to have your con or what is the best way for people to contact you on your Facebook page or your website what would where would you like us to send everybody um, we're the same Facebook, Instagram. Our website is um, The Attic on Myrtle. 
our street name that we're on is Myrtle. So that's where that comes from. But yeah, at the attic on Myrtle. Awesome. We'll have all the links as well so that people can find you and putting you on the spot, my friend, because I'm excited for your, we'll have, hopefully have a wait list or something, yeah. or even an email address that you can reach uh, to get on the list. So you can go to round top or wherever the girls are going next time, because I tell mm-hmm. you the last trip I had FOMO big time. <laughs> There was no freedom from missing out on that trip. I really wish I could have gone with you. It looked like an amazing trip. And I know that your future trips are going to be as fun. I mean, come on, that's awesome. So thank you so much for your time here today. Thanks, ladies. Thank you, Wendy. Thank you. Well, that's it for this week's episode of the Creative Shop Talk podcast. I'm so glad that you're here to join us this week, and I hope you found value in what we're sharing here. I want to remind you that our website has all of the show notes. You can find it at wendybatten.com slash podcast. Everything that you need to hear about today's podcast is there. Also an opportunity if you need to reach out to me. If I can support you in any way whatsoever, please feel free to reach out. Make sure you join our Rockstar Creatives Facebook group. We will continue the conversation over there weekly. So thanks for joining us. Please leave a review, subscribe if you can, and never miss an episode. We hope to see you back here again next week. Thanks, my friend. Have a great week.